to be speaking today to uh, Rado Jude. Uh, last year he was a member of our international jury here in Ghent and uh, this year A wonderful uh, experience, uh, sorry to interrupt, it was a really wonderful experience both uh, professionally, aesthetically regarding the, the films which were tremendous, most of them, very very interesting the other ones and uh, also uh, personal. I mean, I, I fell in love with the festival, with the city, and I'm so, so unhappy that I cannot uh, be with you this year as well. Yeah, yeah, but we are here digitally, huh? and uh, yeah. we'll meet each other again with the, one of your new films in the upcoming years. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, it's, it, indeed, it's been a year since we spoke. Uh, you were jury member last year in Berlin. You presented two new films, and then came the pandemic. Uh, how did you cope with all this? Well, uh, like everybody, I mean, um... Uh, more and more worried, actually, yeah. and uh, both on personal uh, level regarding the health of uh, of my family, of the people that I'm, uh, I'm uh, I feel close to, and professionally because of course uh, economically this is is a, a disaster for for many many people. Of course, we are not uh, in the front line of of the disaster, but still, uh, cinema yeah. I think will have a. a, a not a bright future ahead for for a few years at least and in romania especially anyway the situation was very fragile now is uh, mm. even yeah, even more fragile yes yeah. but uh, i had some uh, financing for the feature film and at some point after the lockdown ended i spoke with ada solomon my producer and said what, what are we going to do we do the film now or we wait for next year and luckily for us i think we we did the film i just finished shooting one week ago oh, wow. yeah. Hey. It's wow. a, it was a, a tough experience. Uh, yeah. We did a lot of tests. We wear masks all the time, but yeah. we made the film. Okay, good to hear. We'll we'll watch out for the film uh, for the next edition of the festival. Now we're here to talk about uh, uppercase print. Um, how would you describe this film? Because it's it tells a real event. It even uses transcripts of um, of real uh, a trial. Um, but in a very staged uh, uh, Brechtian mise-en-scene uh, and confronted, juxtaposed with um, archival TV footage. Can we call this a documentary, fictionalized documentary, or don't you care about how we call it? No, I think the, yes, we can call it a fictionalized documentary. We can call it a docudrama, uh, which is normally a TV format. Uh, a docu fiction, I don't know, but uh, I would call it the cinema first of all, because yeah, for me, yeah. this is the most important thing. Uh, the, the crucial question is always what cinema can do with a certain topic, with a subject, with a situation. I mean, what cinema can do more than can do a book or a newspaper article or a, a photograph, mm -hmm. I don't know. And um, it's true that uh, some people even don't even call it a film. You know, there were people saying, well, well, but this is not a film. This is just uh, stage documents and so on, which is true. But I think it comes from, uh, from, uh, from well, it, it's a complex thing and I wouldn't, I, we don't have time to go into all the details. But one of the most important thing I think is uh, uh, the, the fact that the cinema has a, a, the, the biggest power of cinema is to create a reality, to, to create the illusion of a reality. When you see a, I don't know, a, a Hollywood film or when you see Blade Runner or, a, mm -hmm. uh, or a, another type of, of cinema, uh, the feeling of reality is, is very, very powerful. And this is what is important for, for most of the viewers. And this is the biggest power of cinema. But in the, in the same sense, in, in, in the same time, I think it's also a danger in that because it, it creates uh, a, a, such a, a, a kind of second hand reality, which sometimes viewers uh, remain with, with this reality as the real reality, so to speak. If, if, we speak, uh -huh. if you think of Schindler's List, many people know about Holocaust because remember Schindler's List. And I think this is very problematical. And because I don't like this approach, I wanted to, 
get rid of this power of the cinema and to show all the time that there is, there is something, uh, a construction that is uh, something uh, artificial. artificial. Yeah. yeah, and and to, and to use it as a tool of thinking and of reflecting of what is a reconstruction, what is reality, what is cinematic reality, what is cinema and history, and all these things come together, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the film is based on a theater play. Um, how did you come across it? Uh... It is a theater play, but this is not a, a very proper word, actually, because uh, Janina Carbonario, who's a theater director and playwright, and she always writes her text and makes uh, the play, they directs her plays, and she's really talented, and, and uh, I admire her a lot, uh, actually didn't write a, a play in a traditional sense. She just took uh, uh, chunks of text, Parts, yeah. text from a from a huge uh, Securitate file. I, I'll show it to you, actually. Yeah. It's, it's actually, sorry, I didn't think of that before. It's this, this is the, uh, the uh, a copy complete of, file. of the Secret Service police file of, of uh, teenager Mugur Kalinescu from 1981. Uh, so this is the text actually, and she took this text, uh, this uh, which is not a dramaturgical text, it's not a literary text, it's just a, a secret police uh, text and recordings, yeah. and transform it into a drama dramaturgical document, so to speak. Yeah. And she staged the play. What I did was to take uh, again the file with her, and we reworked the text. We choose okay. some other things that she had in the play. We uh, we skip others. And then I staged it again and filmed it in a studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five days or six days of shooting. This is what we had. Yeah. And then came, so, so this is how I got the, 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 but the play I saw it, I think eight years ago or seven years ago. And I never thought back then that I would make a film out of it. On the contrary, I said, no, 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 this is, this is not, uh, this is not uh, for a film. Uh -huh. Because somebody asked me, would you like to make a film out of it? A friend, I said, no, never. <laughs> At that time, yeah. At, At that the time, time you started, yeah. But what, 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 what changed? changed? It was that after that, uh, first of all, it stayed in my head, the situation, mm -hmm. the, the bravery of this young kid who, who opposed mm -hmm. Ceausescu's regime naively in 1981, but still very maturely. Uh, and on the other hand, I, in the meantime, I became more and more interested in, uh, as I said before, what cinema can, uh, how cinema can be uh, addressed, can be used in order to offer something for thinking regarding history, regarding society. And all of a sudden, uh, this play is, remained in my head and I said to Janine, I would like to transform it into a film and mm -hmm. work together on the, on the remaking of this text. And then I said, maybe I should to have, because I'm also interested in Eisenstein and his theory of montage, maybe to have mm -hmm. a dialectic of some kind. So this is the most secret text ever from that time. What can we oppose to it? What is the most public image that we can have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we decided that it's the national television, television. of the time. So yeah. I started a research in the archive and chronologically paired the two things. So one can see two different realities which coexisted yeah, yeah, yeah. and made one reality. Yeah, you you were already working on this archival material when you when the idea came to to mix it up with this with the stage play. No, 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 no. no. You started the research when you decided to make this film. Yeah. Yes, and also I um, I was. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> Uh, also, um, uh, uh, the, the first idea was to, to mix it not only with television images, but with photographs from newspapers, yeah. maybe images from fiction films, other documentaries, music. But then uh, we said that we had to limit ourselves because otherwise the, the, it would be very chaotic. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, also, uh, it was the fact that, um, how should I say, uh, this was the most public, this was the most controlled, the most propaganda images were, mm. uh, were the television images. Television, yeah. yeah, yeah yes, yeah, because yeah. in the feature films there was, there is some, uh, there was much more freedom in radio, there was much more, a little bit more freedom in, in newspapers, uh, some freedom. 
but in television it was the least freedom yeah, of yeah, expression. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was really propaganda, like in the beginning of the film, the, the, the scene with the three people there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's actually uh, because it, it was not only a, a research in the archive, because the archive is not very well organized, but yeah. it was a bit of what is called visual archaeology, meaning that we, we, we searched, for instance, the beginning of the film with that moment where the people are caught uh, in the rehearsal of, uh, of the recording of, uh, mm -hmm. of a propaganda TV yeah. program was actually uh, on a digital, on a beta SP tape on, on, a, on the end of it. It wasn't, uh, I just found it by accident, wow. reminding the tape at some point. So you must have seen a lot of archive material, archival material then. Yes, I've seen, actually, I think I've seen uh, uh, around 10% of the, all the archive from those years, yeah. which is uh, not very much, but I think I, I've seen, I, I stopped when the material started to repeat themselves. It was the, yeah, the same yeah. type of materials coming again yeah. and again and yeah. again. So I said, okay, probably nothing new will come out of it because at some point you, you must decide where to stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And from this, which was like, I don't know, one, two hundred hours or something, maybe even more, we cut down to 10 hours. And from these yeah. 10 hours, there's one hour and 20 minutes, I think, of archive, yeah. even less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the story about uh, the 16-year-old kid, was it a, a well-known story in Romania at the time or, or not? At the time, uh, you mean in the 80s? Yeah. No, it was uh, all these stories were not... not Only not for the people story. involved in the, in, the, in the small city where he lived or in the city where he lived. Well, yes, people from the city, from the small city where he lived in Botoshan were aware of this, yeah. but it wasn't a, a well-known story. And actually, the only well-known story of uh, dissidents against the, the Ceausescu regime were only uh, the ones who were more or less, let's say, connected with the intellectual circles because they had some connections with Radio Free Europe or with yeah. Romanian intelligentsia from abroad that they would try to help them. Yeah, and yeah. speak about them at, at Radio Free Europe or in the Western press and so on. But, and actually one of the other reasons that Janina made the play and I made the film was the fact that uh, there is also a class element even when people speak about uh, the, the, the few people who opposed Ceausescu regime. The ones who are well known or more or less well known in the Romanian society are the ones who are coming from either from the party itself or from intellectual circles or from bourgeois bourgeoisie the communist bourgeoisie but the workers the working class people uh, are not well known yeah. nobody because they, they don't have they didn't have after the revolution they didn't have the tools to express themselves they didn't write in newspapers or they didn't write books about their experience yeah, yeah. so this is another reason because we wanted to show that there was a real opposition coming from the working class people working class background people yes there, there, there must be quite a few files like like this story perhaps uh, in... uh, re regarding uh, uh, people, people who opposed or teenagers. yeah 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 well I, yeah everybody who did that had a, has a file absolutely uh, what was the interesting here? And I know now why that. exactly did you choose, or did the, 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 the theater director choose this uh, story? <laughs> That's a good question. And I actually, she did another uh, show, I think, prior to that, about an intellectual who opposed the regime, Dorin Doran, who's a poet. He lived, uh, and I think he still lives and works in the United States of America. But his file, as far as I heard, is huge. It's, tens of thousands of, 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 of uh, papers. And she did, she only, she only chose a, a fraction. What is striking about this file of this teenager is that it's, it's not very big. It may be 800 pages or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, enormous, but it's very clear that you can see exactly the mechanism of repression, the mechanism of constructing yeah. a file because also uh, we kept the chronology of the of the file 
of the story, which is uh, as it is shown in the file. So you can see how a file is constructed bit by bit, how a surveillance operates. Works, and I think yeah. this is one reason, the fact that the, this file, you see it very clear because it's not so big that you can you, you, you don't get lost into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and the second, I think for me, well, why I was always impressed uh, reading the file is the fact that this kid was very, 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 uh, uh, not only intelligent, but very mature. He has a real mature thinking. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of the formula he used uh, are maybe taken from Radio Free Europe, mm -hmm. like the story about the solidarity, the Solidarność movement in Poland and so on. But others come from him and he's, he's somebody, uh, as a, a friend, uh, Andrei Uzika said when he saw the film that it, it showed how uh, uh, young people without big influence, without uh, books around, without uh, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of education in this direction, discovers his inner freedom and, and uh, cannot stand the lack of freedom and starts to express it like in a natural, uh, from a natural need to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the real story took place in, in 1981, so there must be still people around that knew the guy or knew the family or knew the situation. Did you talk to any of these people? Uh, or, or yeah, they... actually we have, uh, I, I, I didn't personally talk because the, the parents died, unfortunately, in the last years, his parents died. He didn't have uh, brothers or sisters, so there's no relatives known. But the, the last part of the film, is actually made uh, uh, from interviews that Janina conducted with the real Securitate officers, the real security officers, and with other people around. And uh, um, yes, I didn't uh, meet them myself, but Janina did this work before that. Before you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. And it's striking uh, to see. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. No, I, I was uh, saying that it's striking, but I think it's normal that. Uh, the people involved in the surveillance have this justification that it was just a job, so yeah, everybody yeah. has a job. And if this was the law, then there's nothing wrong. And of course, yeah. we know that there's always something wrong here. And and this is the um, well, I can understand that you need uh, to find the defense, and this is the defense all, already yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. You no, know, it was lawful. This was the law. I didn't do yeah. anything against the law. Yeah. 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 Um, you just mentioned, and I read that you filmed this in, in only six days. That must have been crazy. Uh, uh, well, but no, I guess you, you it, no? Actually, yes, but we didn't have a big budget and uh, uh, the sets and the, the studio, the rental of studio. Well, was, yeah. And the, the archive was also expensive, although we have a, a, a co-production with Romanian television in the end. So it was... Uh, a, decision how to make it and uh, the way I, uh, I was thinking about the film was that the actors anyway are only communicating the text it's not real acting so to speak so mm -hmm. we did a lot of rehearsals before for them to learn the text although I was kind of stupid because we could have, we, we could have used teleprompters but I never thought of that I wanted the actors. <laughs> and then we, uh, we, we created the sets with Irina Mosku was the, the, the production designer and we light, we pre-lighted one or two days, and then we shot everything very fast in five or yeah. six, five days and a half, actually. It was yeah. a... You probably spend a lot more time in the cutting room with, uh, yeah. with all the archival material. And uh, yeah, how did, how did you choose the, the, the scenes from the archive and, and where to put them in the film? Um, was there any systematic in, a, in that? Yes and no. Uh, actually, usually filmmakers like to say that everything is controlled, everything was done according to, to a plan, everything was done for a reason. And uh, of course, I had a, we had a, a, a method here. We, first of all, we, it was the chronological uh, mm -hmm. uh, criterion, so to speak. So we chose the materials exactly uh, from the dates where the story was happening. Oh, okay, if it was yeah. happening on 17th of, of October, I would look for what was broadcasted on the television in the same time, so to have. Okay, but yeah. in the end, it's not very, very systematical like that because some of the materials 
were not exactly known where they were broadcasted. It was a, a, a bit more chaotic than that. And then, um, yes, actually, I, 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 I chose all the materials that remain in the film based on two criterion. After the chronological criterion is the fact that all have some details language details, image details, costume details, uh, I don't know, a kind of details which I found important for this story in a very oblique way, of course. Mm -hmm. So I, I only kept the materials where I, I think there are important uh, details to be observed. And, the, and it is a film about details. I mean, uh, people sometimes get bored uh, on it. And, well, I, I can accept that and I'm really sorry. But I think one of the problem is not only of the film, but of the fact that they expect a plot to develop yeah. very fast. And it's not a real plot, but it's yeah. full of details. Yeah. So I invite the viewers to watch the details more than the, than the plot. And uh, No, and the archival material is very intriguing to see, especially for us Western audiences. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, um, your, your films often deal with history, but uh, through these films and through these stories, you definitely want to comment on uh, on what's happening today, on, on the present day. For example, you end this film with, like you said, the, 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 the interviews on, of the Secretary Policeman reflecting on the, the, the time uh, of the events. But also you end this with footage from the Bucharest right now, right? Yeah, can you can you tell us a bit why why you chose to to end the film with these scenes? Oh, I think uh, there's there's more uh, explanations possible or more interpretations possible. It is, uh, in my opinion, a, a open work uh, in opera aperta, as Umberto Eco said in his book. In a way, the fact that uh, yes, I I I. Uh, I wanted to keep the principle. First of all, I I I, I, I wanted to use also television archive from nowadays. And I said, uh, well, this is very stupid because uh, if I use materials from 1981, it's because of the fact that I cannot create materials from that time, of course. Mm -hmm. But now I can I can show with a camera some, some things from nowadays, some of the essence of today. And then I started to think and to research uh, and I, I had a list of, I don't know, 100 things to shoot which would reflect the society of today. Uh, but in the end, I said, no, maybe I should find only, only one image, only mm -hmm. one shot that, that has everything from, which is uh, uh, from today, very, I mean, the important things of today, yeah. and also that they create, they enter in a relation with, mm -hmm. with that past. And you have in this shot uh, uh, the, the new Marriott Hotel with the luxury brands. You have mm -hmm. the crazy traffic in Bucharest. You have all the, the supermarket and small market of uh, capitalist uh, age. You have the new uh, cathedral of, of the salvation of the people. This is, this is how it's called, which, is, which shows the power of the church, which is enormous nowadays in, in Romania. And in the end, you have a, a big Ceausescu palace in the in the background. So you have all these things, all these realities, all these historical times coming together. And mm -hmm. on the sound, there's the, the Securitate uh, speaking about it, because also we know now that a lot of businesses and a lot of uh, economical power of Romania nowadays belong to the people who had relations with the Securitate, with the secret police, or they were officers in that secret police so yeah this yeah. was my reason so that's how the history still reflects in in today's bucharest yes mm -hmm. yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, has the film already been released in in romania or, or yes it was released but just uh, one week uh, before the lockdown uh, uh, started yeah so it wasn't uh, it was released uh, just a week or 10 days or something like that and then uh, now in the summer and autumn, we had a few summer uh, open air screenings and I think it's going to be shown on TV at the end oh, yeah, of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how are the reactions? How, how do people relate to the story and, and to, their, to their past? 
No, this kind of uh, actually cont uh, contrary to the other films that I've done uh, about the fascist past of Romania, yeah. which were more, um, which were yeah, much more. Uh, how should I say? Uh, re violently received uh -huh. because that's a past that people are negating it. Uh, maybe a little bit like the the, the Leopold, uh, Leopold Leopold II in Belgium. In Belgium, yeah. In Belgium something like yeah. That. Uh, but uh, regarding the, the communist dictatorship, there's now big, um, many, most of the people young or old agree that it was terrible and uh, yeah. some have find some reason, some don't, but uh, there's no, not a big uh, uh, issue no, from no, this no. point of view. But, and I, the, the reason I made the film was actually because I, I, I saw that I could find this form. Uh, to 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 show that using montage, using this archive, using this this situation, so to 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 offer the description of the era of a bygone era of the communist dictatorship using these tools, which nobody, yeah. at least in Romania, nobody used them in this way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much for your time at, uh, to thank speak you. to us. Uh, we hope that with your next film, you will be again in Ghent uh, in one of the upcoming editions. And let's hope it's a normal edition where we can let's hope receive you here in Ghent. Okay. Thank you and have a great festival. Thank you so much.